Welcome to your second lesson in momentum. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at something called impulse. Impulse is just the change of momentum. By the end of this lesson, hopefully you'll be able to explain quantitatively the concepts of impulse and the change of momentum by using Newton's laws of motion. So let's get started here. Why are we looking at Newton's laws of motion to explain impulse? Well, interestingly enough, Newton began his work of think of his famous equation, force is equal to mass times acceleration, not actually thinking about acceleration. Instead, he was more concerned with force being defined as the rate of a change of an object's momentum as a passage of time. According to this following equation here, force is equal to the change in momentum divided by time. Now we can rearrange this, so we say force multiply the change of time is equal to the change in momentum. So this can be a very useful equation. It helps explain situations like when a hockey puck has no momentum until a hockey stick whacks it for a period of time with either a slap shot or a wrist shot. The stick applies a force to the puck in a small interval of time which is referred to an impulse which changes its momentum. Another idea is if we look back to our first lesson when we're choosing which rock we are going to have the glass trying to cause a change of momentum to the boulder. If it can't change the momentum, doesn't have enough force to apply that change of momentum in a short amount of time, the boulder will, or rock, will go through the glass of our vehicle so we can get our calculator for our test. So since impulse is just really equal to force times the change of time, we could say that impulse has the units as Newton seconds. Or, since impulse is just the change of momentum, Impulse would then have the same units as momentum, which is kilograms, meters per second. So let's consider for a second here this bungee jumper. Why do you think this bungee jumper here would rather have a bungee elastic cord strapped to his ankles or waist instead of a yellow tow rope around his ankles or waist? Well, the reason why has to do with impulse. And the forces related to time dealing with impulse. So remember, impulse is equal to force times the change of time. Okay. So if we rearrange this for force, we end up getting impulse divided by change of time. Now, in this case here, we're going to be changing the impulse is going to be the same. It's going to come to a stop anyways. But if I increase the amount of time, that's going to cause me to decrease the amount of force on the body. So by having a last accord, it'll take a lot longer for you to stop, and that means you'll have less force on your body. So now let's take a look at our first example. In our first example, we have a car. So to improve the safety of motorists, modern cars are built with something called a crumple zone, which is where the front end crumples upon impact. A 1200 kilogram car traveling at a constant velocity of 8 meters per second east hits a wall and comes to a stop in 0.25 seconds. Part A wants you to calculate the impulse provided by the car. So if we look at A, we're looking at the impulse, which is just change in momentum. Now if we're looking at this car, the mass isn't going to change. So what must change? The only thing that could change is velocity. So change in velocity times mass is the change in momentum. We could also say the change in momentum is the change in the mass times velocity, but that's not going to happen here. So in other words, impulse, which is change in momentum, is equal to the change in velocity multiplied by the mass. Now my change in velocity is kind of easy. We're going from 8 meters per second east to 0 meters per second. So in other words, we change from 8 meters per second west. My mass stays the same and it's 1200 kilograms. So if we were to calculate my momentum, we plug this in, I'm going to end up with 9600 kilograms meters seconds west. Now, let's take a look at B. B wants to know what is the average net force exerted on the car. Well, once again, we know my impulse or change in momentum is also equal to force times times. This is a derivative of Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So, we go back here, we want to figure out the force, which is going to be equal to my change in momentum divided by my change in time. So in that case there, I'm going to get my change in momentum is 9,600, and we want to divide that by my time, which is 0.25 seconds.
is I'll end up getting 3.84, and that's going to be Newton's west is my force. So we need a direction here. So we have that force to stop it is going to be 3.84 newtons. So that's the amount of force that's felt on the body and everything of the vehicle. So now we're going to look at C. For the same impulse, suppose the car did not have a crumple zone. It had a rigid bumper. Now the car comes to stop in 0.04 seconds. Calculate the new force of the car. So same idea here. We know my force is equal to my impulse, which is change in momentum, divided by my change in time. We know from the question before, my change in momentum is 9,600 kilograms meters per second. I know my time is 0.04 seconds. If we divide this, I'm going to end up getting 2.4 times 10 to the 5, and that's going to be kilograms meters per second squared and for my force and that's going to be west. So in other words we have quite a bit more force when there's no crumple zone. It's almost 10 times more of the force so that's quite a bit to her and that's why we have that crumple zone in a vehicle. So now here are two questions for you to try to see if you get the answer. So I want you right now to pause the video and try both of these questions on your own and I'll show you the answers to see if you get the right answers. If you don't, ask me in class tomorrow. Okay, so now here are your solutions. Our next two examples are going to be based on graphs. So let's look at our first graph in example two. The graph below approximates the force applied to a tennis ball by a tennis racket during the time they're in contact. What impulse does the ball receive from the racket? Now, I look at this, we know that impulse or momentum, change in momentum, is equal to force times time. So this makes here a multiplication of an array. So if, if I look at this, if I had a graph that looks something like this, and I had force and I had time down there, we could find the area under the curve would be my momentum. So that's essentially the same idea here. So we want to find the area under this triangle. So all we have to do here is we're going to go base times height divided by 2 because we have a triangle here. So my momentum is equal to base times height divided by 2, the area of the triangle, which is actually, we look at this here, my base is my time multiplied by my height, which is my force. Then we're going to divide that by 2. This is going to end up giving me my time is 1 second times 10 newtons, which is, and we divide that by 2, which is going to give me 5 newtons seconds. So example 3 is another graph dealing with force on a ball as a function of time. In this question here, we want to again find the impulse delivered to the ball from in between the time, in this case, 0 to 6 seconds. Now, in this one here, we could break it down two ways. We have a trapezoid on top and a triangle on the bottom. We could look at it that way. Where, or I could break it down into a bunch of triangles and rectangles. I'm going to do it that way, since some of you might not remember the formula for a trapezoid. So let's look at this here. We have to find the area under the curve again. And we're going to break this down into little shapes like this. So I have shape 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. So if I look at 1, we want to know the area. So my area under the curve is going to be my impulse. So my change in momentum, or impulse, is equal to, in this case, we're going to have my force multiplied by my time, and we're going to divide that by 2. In this case right here, I'm going to have 2 times 8 divided by 2, which is going to give me 8, and that's going to be Newton's seconds. Now let's look at section 2. Section 2 I'm going to do in red. So in this case we have my change in momentum is equal to, this one's just going to be base times height because it's a rectangle so it's going to be 8 times my change here is 4 minus 2 is 2. Which is going to give me uh, 16 newtons per 
per second. That's in the positive. Then let's look at my number three. So three I'm going to do in purple. And in three, we have only one second there. So change in momentum. So once again, it's a triangle. It's equal to my force times time divided by two, which is equal to, we have a change of one here, and we have eight high, which is equal to four newtons seconds. Okay, now let's try my last one, which is actually in the negative. Try number four. So in this case, we have my change in momentum is equal to force times time divided by two because it's a triangle again. So in this case, I'm going to have my force in this case is negative eight times, in this case, that's one second. That's only one second there. And then we're going to divide it by two, which gives me negative four newtons per second. So now when I find the sum of my area under the curve, I'm going to get 8 plus 16 plus 4 minus 4. These will cancel out, and I'm going to be left with 24 newtons per second. So my answer for this one is A. So now let's take a look at example 4, where we have a club face of a golf club exerts an average force of 595 newtons on a golf ball while in contact with the ball. If the ball is only in contact for 0.0037 seconds, what is the impulse given to the golf ball by the club? So the force is going to accelerate it theoretically for only 0.0037 seconds. So in other words, that's going to give us our impulse or our change in momentum is how long we apply the force for. So once again, we know my formula is impulse or change in momentum is equal to force times time. Here, we know my force is 595 newtons. And we know my time is 0 0.037 seconds. So when I multiply this together, I'm going to get 2.2 .2 newton seconds. Now if I look at this, so now I'm looking, my answer can only be either B or C. But now, B says in the opposite direction of the golf club's movement. No, my momentum is what's moving it. My change of momentum goes from zero, and then it's going to mean the same movement of the golf club, so my answer has to be C. So now let's take a look at these two cases. My first case, I have a tennis ball going 10 meters per second in the positive, and it hits a wall and then rebounds at 5 meters per second in the negative. In my second case, I have a tennis ball going 30 meters per second in the positive. It hits the wall and rebounds at 28 meters per second in the negative. I want you now to look at these situations, pause the video for around 2-3 minutes, and then see if you can answer in that time these questions. Which case, is it case A or B, is there a greatest velocity change? In what case, A or B, is there the greatest acceleration. Also then, in which case, A or B, is there the greatest momentum change and then the greatest impulse? So I want you to pause your video, take two minutes to try and answer these questions. So hopefully answer those questions. Now the biggest thing to look at these is, remember, velocity is a vector. So is momentum a vector? Also is acceleration. So if I look at the difference here, the difference in velocity here is actually 15 meters per second. This is positive, that's in the negative. This one here is 58 meters per second. So if I look which one has the greatest velocity change, it's obviously case B. If I look which one has the greatest acceleration, it's most likely case B because it's a split second when it changes direction when it hits the wall. So which one has the greatest change in momentum? Well, the greatest change in velocity means the greatest change in momentum. The ball never changed size, did it? The mass of the ball should remain the same. So the momentum change is the greatest in case B, because it has the greatest change of velocity or the greatest acceleration. Which one has the greatest impulse? Well, impulse is momentum change, so it also must be B. So some of you might have made a mistake where you thought, hey, 30 minus 28 is only two meters per second, but you have to look at and take into account the direction, which is a key thing because these are vectors. So now let's see if you really understand this. Okay. So in case A, 
The car rebounds and thus encounters a velocity change of 9 meters per second. In case B, the car does not rebound and the velocity change is only 5 meters per second. Rebounding is characterized by large velocity changing. So when we rebound, we have a bigger change in velocity and that causes more force on the body. So now using impulse and momentum and Newton's laws, I want you to pause and think of why crumple zones are made to reduce the effective force on the car. Okay? So I will talk to you about this tomorrow in class, this part. So now let's go to my last question, which is a diploma question. So here it says the risk of motorists becoming fatally injured in a vehicle collision is reduced when the airbag and seatbelt are used. Now why does an airbag and seatbelt reduce the fatality in a collision? Is it because the airbag and seatbelt achieve the same change in momentum uh, by, and decrease and then they end up decreasing the force of the motorist's experiences or is it because they achieve the same change in momentum and increases the stopping force the motorist experiences? Or is it C, they decrease the change of momentum and decreasing the force? Or is it D, decreasing the change of momentum and increasing the force? Well, first of all, we don't want to increase the force. The force on us is a bad thing. Now, the seatbelt and the airbag, they still make us have the same impulse, same change of momentum. We go from a certain speed to zero. So, it must achieve the same change of momentum. But what they do is they give us more time to slow down, to change that momentum. The seatbelt protects you from moving forward too fast and the airbag cushions you a bit more. So it takes a bit more seconds before you actually stop. So it slows you down slower, so you have less acceleration. Now if I look at that, that is what is the key here. If they didn't have me fly off, we hit our car or something like that, you'd die instantly. So my answer must be, the change of momentum is the same, but it decreases the force by, decrease, by increasing the amount of time it takes us to change that momentum. So the answer here will be A. So here are some practice problems for you guys to do on your own. And to see if you guys get these here, I'll give you the answers. And we will talk in class tomorrow about this and see how you did. And there are your answers.